I'm Arunesh Mathur. This is joint work with Jonathan Mayer and Mihir Sheet Sagar. So what is a dark pattern? Here is one example called trick questions. This interface is asking you for your consent to send you marketing material and to share your data with third parties. Say you wanted to opt out of both practices. You'd be inclined to uncheck both these checkboxes. If you were to uncheck the first box, you would indeed opt out, but pay close attention to the second. If you were to uncheck it, you would actually be opting in. This is not an isolated example. Researchers have created taxonomies that categorize various kinds of dark pattern user interfaces, and these taxonomies have helped us better understand what these interfaces look like. Yet many questions remain unanswered. How do we define a dark pattern user interface? What makes a dark pattern normatively problematic? How can researchers help policymakers decide when to intervene against certain classes of user interfaces? To answer these questions, we first reviewed the dark patterns literature from the HCI community, the security and privacy communities, as well as current legislation and regulatory materials about dark patterns. Reviewing this literature, we observed that there is a significant variation among the facets of dark patterns that the definitions highlight. These definitions diverge along these facets and often contain inconsistencies with the dark patterns that they then go on to list in the taxonomies. And that is why it is challenging to define a dark pattern because there are different concepts at play here. Having reviewed this literature, we argued that at their core, dark patterns are choice architecture modifications. They either modify the decision space or they manipulate the information that is available to users. But more importantly, both of these represent themes, not a single definition. In fact, this parallels Daniel Solov's now seminal observation that privacy is not a single concept. Instead, it is a family of related but distinct concepts. We argue that rather than focusing on a single definition, we as a community should focus on the normative considerations that motivate the underlying descriptive themes to ultimately decide when a user interface is a dark pattern. Choice architecture research in other disciplines has already done this. We do this here for the dark patterns literature. And we describe four normative lenses that can help us examine dark patterns. For example, consider this cookie banner, which is designed to induce users to allow tracking cookies. Under the individual consumer welfare lens, we might consider the user interface a dark pattern because it results in a loss of individual privacy. Under this collective welfare lens, we might consider the user interface a dark pattern because it benefits marketplace incumbents who can aggregate and leverage a large volume of personal data, leading to reduced market competition. Under the regulatory compliance lens, we might consider the user interface a dark pattern because it frustrates or violates the purposes of the GDPR. Finally, under the individual autonomy lens, we might consider the user interface a dark pattern because users may be unaware of the choices that are available to them, thus depriving them of autonomy in their decision making. So these normative lenses offer us different perspectives to view dark patterns. We argue that HCI researchers can use well-established empirical methods to analyze dark patterns through these normative lenses. Such an analysis can help us move beyond the ad hoc and descriptive labels that we currently have for dark patterns and instead focus on assessing how dark patterns raise specific normative concerns. So how can we use this framework to analyze dark patterns? Well, consider the trick questions user interface that I described at the beginning of this talk. We start by selecting a normative lens. Say we were to pick the individual welfare lens. We would then select a measurement method. Say we selected a lab experiment method. Under the individual welfare lens, we would start by selecting a specific kind of welfare that we may want to measure. Here, that may be a loss of privacy. We next select a metric to study the loss of privacy, and one such metric could be examining users' privacy preferences. Finally, we contextualize the metric by comparing it to a baseline. There are many ways to select a baseline. One baseline could be the trick question's dark pattern without the actual trick. We could then interpret a sufficient deviation from the baseline to conclude that trick questions is in fact a dark pattern under the individual welfare lens. This is the kind of evidence that we could provide a regulator to prove that trick questions is in fact unlawful. Over here, we compared the trick questions interface to a baseline, but you could imagine other designs where we determine how much of an outlier this user interface is in the space of consent interface designs more generally. But instead of the individual welfare lens, say we were to pick a different lens, like the individual autonomy lens, and say we selected a measurement method again, say a survey method. 
Under the individual autonomy lens, we would again select a metric to study the loss of autonomy, and one such metric could be whether users notice the available options in the interface. But in this instance, rather than contextualizing the metric by comparing it to a baseline, we could examine it in isolation. And we could interpret if only a small proportion of users recognize the full range of options as evidence that equations is in fact a dark pattern under the autonomy lens. Of course, there are a variety of different considerations that go into designing such a user study. Our paper highlights several of these, and I encourage you to check it out for more details. I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you so much.